Friends, I can't exactly tell you the future of how Winnipeg's season's going to go. I don't know if Winnipeg's going to make the playoffs. I can't tell you if Rick Bonus is going to make it through the entire year. There are so many uncertainties and, and unknowns, and obviously some things are probably a little bit less likely than others. But if you want to bake on one thing happening this year, it's that Brad Lambert is going to be a Winnipeg Jet at some point this season. We'll talk about why I think he's going to make the big club and when we might see him, all coming right up on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. Or Locked On, the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Megaphone, Odyssey, and as you can see, YouTube. We've got audio and video versions of this podcast available uh, for you 24-7, so make sure you give us a follow and a subscription. We really love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline has you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline. It's where the game starts. Now, on tonight's episode, like I said, uh, you know, I, I, I let in with a pretty exciting intro. I think Brad Lambert is going to make the Jets. Um... And like I said, I can't tell you when it's going to happen or even what the circumstances will be, but I suspect Lambert at some point, whether in a limited capacity or maybe even as a more permanent call-up, I, I think Brad has the potential to be a really important member of this team. So let's walk through some of the scenarios and what I've seen from him. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the Montreal Canadiens and Jets squared off yesterday, and I'll have some thoughts later in the episode about the game. But I want to focus on Brad in particular because uh, Lambert is obviously one of like our main, I would say, poster children of the current prospect group. You know, as soon as he was drafted, I was like super excited. I, I actually jumped out of my chair because I felt like Brad was going to be the one that got away for most teams. When you watch him and especially his older footage of when he was really in his prime as a prospect and was super highly touted, you saw this effortless skater a guy with creativity and vision for days, uh, elite puck handling skills, a pretty nice shot, and just a relentless drive to create offense. And then, of course, the Lati Pelican stint happened, and people started thinking, well, maybe this kid is washed. Maybe he doesn't really have anything left in the tank. But as you might expect, sometimes you're not really looking at the full context and understanding the picture. You might see some things that you might maybe take away the wrong conclusions, and that's why it's important to trust uh, your scouting staff and understanding what the data is really telling you, which is kind of why I feel like Will Scouch's breakdowns where he sort of walked through what Lambert was doing on the ice, even with really poor teammates. I think it, it showcased what he can really do for a team. It, you know, once you actually draft him and get him immersed with talented players and we've seen Brad's confidence and ability skyrocket since coming into Winnipeg and playing during camp and during these preseason games. Against the Montreal Canadiens, Brad had a two-point night. He had an assist and a goal, uh, and the goal was actually a game-tying goal, which is pretty killer. And moreover, you just saw him really be the dynamic creator and attacker that we know he can be. What I think Brad does better than most of the Jets' prospects and players is really create space on his own. We don't have many skaters who are like individually excellent at one-on-one -on -one matchups. Uh, Kyle is basically the main one. Ehlers, to a certain extent, can definitely do it. But I think Ehlers' game is a little bit different from, from KFC and from Lambert as well. Brad is one of those guys who just sort of powers up uh, and really has an amazing top stride. And then he can cut inside against defenders and easily drive towards the net. We've seen him do it a lot during this preseason. And I feel like at the NHL level, that's going to be one of his signature scoring moves. Pierre-Luc Dubois actually kind of did the same thing, although we don't see that see it as much these days. 
But with Lambert, I think it's going to be one of the hallmarks of how he creates uh, offense in the slot. So we saw that. Uh, also, what I was really impressed with was he would kind of do these overlapping routes, whether transitioning from the neutral zone into the offensive zone and then finding, you know, different soft spots between the faceoff circles. Maybe he'd drop a very cheeky little pass. He would maybe loft a pass over a defender's stick into a really dangerous shooter uh, across the wing to switch the play. I just saw a lot from him that was pro caliber stuff. And I think it kind of reminds us that maybe just maybe Brad is a little bit further along than people realized. I thought that he would probably need a good season with the uh, Seattle Thunderbirds. I believe it is um, with uh, with his teammate Tyrell. Um, But it, it kind of feels like pro hockey is his destination. And I've mentioned it before. I think the moose are going to be where he ends up for most of the season. But the reality is you look at the Jets team, you look at the roster, and there is not a lot of scoring depth. Winnipeg is kind of thin up front, especially for elite finishing and creativity. And that's where I think Brad can really make a difference. And I've never been more convinced than now that he is at some point going to make this team. I think there is the reality that the Jets are going to try to be careful when to burn his contract years whether they want to start him young or maybe wait a little bit and give it at least one more season. But if the Jets are intent on making the postseason this year, then I think Brad is going to have to be part of your lineup. I think they're going to give him some games with the Moose to see where his commitment is at, where his consistency is, and whether he can continue dominating dominating against you know weaker competition before they step it up to a higher level of pro hockey. My guess is Lambert is going to destroy the AHL. I think it's not going to take him long. And I think kind of like Cole Perfetti, there's just some players that you watch and you know right off the bat, they're just different. They're built different. And I think Lambert for me is kind of in that same category. In terms of like an effortless creator when he's in possession, Brad is it. I mean, this dude is just oozing offensive skill. Um, I know some people hate that word, but, uh, you know, he he has spatial awareness, decision-making, speed, great shooting, excellent stick handling. The kid just has it all. And I think at the NHL level, we're going to really see him start to you know, hone his game, develop the right um, characteristics to really flesh out the areas where he maybe still needs to work on and really become a versatile offensive threat. I think Lambert for me is one of the most exciting players. And I, I don't know if any of you are really into betting, uh, you know, mentally or otherwise, Put some mental cash down on Lambert making the Jets this year. I'm convinced he's going to do it. It might even be out of camp if he gets like a 13 game or whatever uh, audition with Winnipeg. But one way or another, he is going to play for this team this year. And I cannot wait to see what he accomplishes against some of the top players out there because I really feel like Lambert is already on the path to being a superstar for Winnipeg. And you should be getting excited right now. Now, of course, you know, Lambert is one of our many fabulous prospects, but we've got other guys that are worth really spotlighting. And I want to talk about the game against uh, the Montreal Canadiens in a little bit more detail with some things that stood out positively and maybe some things that are room for improvement. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at BetOnline.net. BetOnline is your number one source for football betting info this season, whether you're looking into college football or maybe you're an established NFL fan. Uh, Just so you know, I'm personally a Ravens fan. Some of y'all are probably Vikings fans. I don't know how you do it. Root for a better purple theme team. (laughs) Kidding aside, I know y'all are are geographically close. So that's why a lot of you tend to root for them. But of course, if you want to stay up to date on the latest in Vikings football, you can check out BetOnline for the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, in-depth articles, and and analysis on every single game you need, whether it's from the start of the season up till now, and maybe even stuff predicting the future. BetOnline remains your continued source for all of your sports betting information needs with live betting, up-to-the-minute scores, and just about everything in between. They've got all your favorite sports from MLB baseball to MMA, boxing, golf, horse racing, even German football if you love that kind of stuff like I do. They've really got everything, and if you don't love sports, they've also got Vegas casino games because they want to have something for just about everyone. To get started, go to betonline.net to to register for a free account right now because BetOnline is where the game starts. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. 
Like I said, we are taking a look at Winnipeg versus Montreal, which was an interesting preseason game. Um, I'd say this was kind of a game of, you know, two distinct portions. I wouldn't say halves because I think Winnipeg dominated the first two periods and then the third period kind of rolled around and Winnipeg started to struggle a bit. Not because Winnipeg was really bad at even strength. In fact, for the most part, Winnipeg really just made Montreal's life very difficult at even strength, which is good to see. Uh, Montreal didn't exactly dress the deepest lineup. I mean, you had a couple of guys like Gallagher, Caulfield, and a few others who were star players, but generally speaking, a lot of AHLers and depth players and prospects, uh, similar to what the Jets were running, but I I think for the most part, Montreal's lineup may have been a little bit less deep just because Manitoba, again, the Moose were a wagon last year, and a lot of those players are likely to filter into Winnipeg's ranks. But All that said, you know, for the most part, I think Winnipeg did a really good job of disrupting Montreal's offensive zone possessions. They forced uh, Montreal to, you know, into turnovers and really bad situations, some poor passes. Uh, Occasionally, Montreal skaters got caught hot, you know, higher up the ice and created turnovers out of that. The Jets created offensive opportunities off those counters. And I liked what I saw. Generally speaking, I liked what I saw. Um, Not everything was great, though. Uh, We're going to start off with the bad first because that's always the stuff that's not really fun to talk about, and it's always the nastiest, right? So I still think the special teams for me are kind of a mess. Uh, I don't exactly know what's going on with the penalty kill, but it looks very disorganized. It might just be a personnel thing, but we've kind of been used to this now over the last several years, and like the, the PK unit kind of chasing, not really being in good positions, not having the awareness to mark out certain routes. That's kind of what we saw again, and I hope that it's not a continuing theme once we enter the actual season because uh, that PK is going to be tested a decent amount. I would imagine I think Bonus likes to have a very aggressive style of hockey, which may or may not lead to more stick fouls, maybe some more holding stuff, maybe a few rough hits. Um, Winnipeg's going to have to really be careful, and I think being disciplined should be a priority for this team, especially if they don't want to give Hellebuck way too much work to deal with. Aside from that, the power play I thought was just sufficient. Uh, you know, the, the the personnel choices and stuff and the arrangements, I still don't fully understand some of the theory behind where they're playing certain guys. Um, it, it's not always like it's really bad, but, you know, sometimes some of the shooters that they have in the face-off circles or in the slot don't really align to how I would do it, but it is what it is. I'll say that at least they're using uh, Vili Heinola on that back end, which is fantastic because he really can quarterback a power play at an elite level. Now, uh, speaking of Heinola, this kind of ties into one of the things that I I didn't love tonight, Um, and not just specifically with Heinola, but in general, the defense, especially like the younger rookie players, they had a tougher night. Uh, Sandberg and Stanley kind of struggled under pressure. Sandberg was definitely the better of the two, but he had a number of issues. He was on the ice for a really ugly goal on the PK where he kind of got caught pinching did a very low against Stanley thing. In fact, the commentators thought it was Stanley pinching uh, on the left side. He lost the stick. He got taken out of the play and Winnipeg ended up conceding the first goal off of that. Now that power play or that, that, that penalty kill was actually a result of a really lazy penalty from really Heinola. That was an unforced error and a holding call that just really didn't need to happen. And so it wasn't really great. Right after that though, I think Heinola really started to separate from the rest of the pack. Uh, the main thing that you're getting with him is really good passing, fast transitions, and just, I mean, again, ridiculous passing. I really don't think I can understate that. Um, actually, sorry, I can't really overstate that. His passing and his vision up the ice are just almost second to none. The only player that I think can really do what he does is Perfetti, and Cole can just kind of pass better than almost anyone out there in the entire league. So Heinola, I think, really showcased his transition ability You know, his creativity when he was inside the offensive zone was a wonder to watch. He had great overlaps. He had really nice passes, a couple of really dangerous shots. He would attack down low in space where he could find shooting and scoring opportunities. Just a really great night from him in terms of offensive creation. Um, Defensively, again, you're still going to have to recognize it's not going to be a great thing for his his like list of strengths. Uh, Doubly so when you're getting paired with Logan Stanley. So um all that said, I think he, for me at least, had the strongest case for being the number 60. I think you have to understand it's going to be a bit of a, a sacrifice either way. 
you're going to give up something. And I think if the Jets are going to compromise anywhere, you know, sacrifice a little bit of defensive security for that extra level of offensive offensive skill and outscore your opponents. If you create offensive pressure up the ice that keeps you away from your own end, you're not going to have to worry about defending at all. It's going to be defense through offense. And I think Heinola for me kind of exemplifies that. Sandberg and Stanley just don't bring enough to what bonus is looking for. Um, but I do think at the end of the day, Sandberg will probably be the guy who gets it just because he's thought to be the more secure, stable of the defenders. I don't really think anyone uh, stamped their their sealed sign and delivered uh, right to the spot. But I do think Heinola for me still has the edge by a decent margin over most of the other candidates. Now, Villy wasn't the only player auditioning for a roster spot. Obviously, a lot of guys are competing. And we'll talk about some of the depth forwards that I think were really impressive for me outside of like, you know, our obvious top performers like Brad Lambert and company. We'll talk about who these guys are and what I think they might do for the Jets in just a little bit. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Jets. We are closing out tonight with some thoughts on Win Winnipeg versus Montreal. And I wanted to focus on some players who are likely to filter into Winnipeg's bottom six after some really impressive showings. The first name I'm going to mention is uh, Kevin Stenland. Now, Stenland has had a pretty solid preseason in the games that he's shown up. Um, he hasn't really played a ton, but in the games that he started, you know, he's very uh, physically active. He tries to create turnovers with his body. He's very strong on the puck and in possession. And I think he also has some underrated offensive skill. He'll drive to, towards the net. He makes some pretty decent passes. Now, it's not at a level where you're going to be expecting him to be a 30 or 40 point guy. I think he's like a modest two way forward, whether you play him down the middle or out wide. So again, you're not really expecting a lot of offensive production, but kind of like in the men aligning way, they both are decent at creating space. They're both um, creative in a way that helps to create offensive opportunities, even if they're not the ones who are personally converting on them. So all that to say, I think he's got a really solid game. I think he's the kind of guy who would very much be an ideal fourth line pick for me. Maybe a player who lacks certain high-end offensive traits, but can do enough in transition and defensively to justify value, while also occasionally chipping in some nice points here and there. And you know, I'm not really asking the world from Stenland, but I think based on what I've seen of him, he's got some real legit value and might even be an opportunity for a, a nice PK or down the road. Now, if I'm talking about players who I think have a lot more offensive upside, David Gustafson, man, this kid was everywhere in this game. Uh, almost from like puck drop, the dude just constantly, constantly tried to harass puck carriers, force turnovers. He had sublime passes in very dangerous areas, even set up a couple of goal scoring opportunities. One, I think Mason Appleton missed just off the post. There was a lot to love in Gustafson's game. He's a very hard worker. He's a very cerebral player. And for me, I basically kind of call him like my catalyst. Uh, he's he's going to be a guy who just gravitates points to him because um, he's just constantly in the middle of good plays that are happening. He understands where he needs to be positionally. He wants to keep offensive possessions alive. He'll do the defensive work at the other end of the ice. And he's such a force when he's in possession that I feel like if you give him skilled wingers that can finish, the dude is just going to be a points magnet. I don't really know how else to say it. I was really impressed with him. I've been impressed with him ever since he got drafted. I think that there is a legit player who can be maybe even a second line center one day if you nurture him the right way and let him grow into the player that he really can be. Uh, he's already showing some really high end hockey sense, which I know is a bit of an overrated phrase, but the way that he sees the ice and knows how to contribute actively in a positive manner. It's just not something that's common for players his age. And he has such a profound understanding of being in the right place every single time, while also being just a really industrious creator and defensive specialist. So I'm really excited to see where his game goes from here. I think he's got a very high ceiling. And of the players that were maybe really auditioning for a bottom six role. He is still continuing continuing to make like the most resolute case to be a day one lock. I think he's going to be a starter. He might even get a promotion at some point during the season. I'm just very excited about him. Now, the last player I'll briefly talk about that I think had a really solid night um, was not a forward. It's actually a defender, Johnny Kovacevic. 
Uh, I don't know that I'm going to read too much into like defender results for guys who are probably a little more on like the slower pace side, especially against Montreal. They weren't really super active for most of the game. But all that said, I think Kovacevic made nice passes. I thought when it was time to head off counters and stuff from the opponents, he used his frame to really seal off shooting and passing lanes. I thought that he made clean passes out from the defensive zone under pressure. Just a really well-rounded game. And then when it was in the offensive zone, he picked good passing opportunities to set up his teammates. I think he had one or two shooting opportunities himself that he took. Overall, just a really solid game. I think that there was a lot to like in him potentially filling in as maybe like a third pairing player down the road. I still wonder about his game projecting at a level above like AHLers and stuff. But so far from this game and from some of the previous showings, I definitely wouldn't mind him eventually becoming Winnipeg's seventh defender. Uh, there's, There's some stuff in his game that I think can be serviceable in the right role. And if you can... Give him the right pairing partner. I think that there is a a decent defender there. So Kovacevic, it's really cool to see him starting to um, really make a case for a call up at some point. I think the more he develops and really shines for this team, the better off will be because what he's like a right handed defender and the Jets just don't really have all that many of those. So it'd be nice if at least one of them hits for this team and Winnipeg doesn't have to worry about the lack of depth there. But Let me know your observations from this game. Who were you really impressed with? What prospects or even veteran players were you not really in love with? Let me know in the comments below or at my social medias at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets on Twitter. For tonight's episode, though, this is going to be all the time that we have. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. Be sure to make your second listen Locked On NHL. Our experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. It's free to subscribe, so be sure to like, follow, and subscribe right now. And as always, thanks again for having us uh, occupy your Friday morning. And again, thanks for listening. Have a great day, and go Jets go!